Hey, welcome to Tales from the Dark Side. We are reviewing Into the Dark by Gray. I got a great crew with me today. I got my man, the co-pilot, Solo Wookie, and down there from Comic Book Women, Jen. Jen, what's going on? Obviously, we've reviewed uh, a couple of the other books, and everybody has enjoyed it real quickly, so I think we brought back everybody to try to get this one going. Um, we're going to cover it real quickly. We're going to explain to you a couple things. We are going to spoil it. We're definitely going to tell you what happens in it. Uh, so if you haven't read it, you know what to do. Go down, hit the thumbs up, hit the like button. Uh, is that the same thing? I don't even know. Subscribe. Do all the things you're supposed to. Send a comment, come back after you're done and listen to it. We'll even get into some things that some people may have said were a controversy. I don't know. And we'll give you our opinion on it. Here is the cover. This is the book we're reviewing. Uh, you know I like to do the variant covers or the secondary covers. There really wasn't one here, so I did the Spanish. I'm not saying that she won't come out with something later. I know that even like uh, Soul and stuff like that is now doing a third thing where he's doing a little remark and putting stuff in books. So just keep checking back if you haven't bought it. Definitely Foul Gray. Um, for those people who don't know some of her works in Star Wars before, I'm just going to put this up real quickly. These are some of them. She is one of my favorite writers of Star Wars. Lost Stars was great. It was a lead into um, The Force of Awakens. It's pretty much about people who grew up on the same planet, a boy and a girl, and they ended up going different ways. One went to the empire or the, you know, resistance and back and forth. She did a very good job on that. Um, then she did bloodlines. I always say that her Leia is how Leia should be written. I don't think I've ever heard an argument about that. Everybody I know thinks how she writes Leia is how Leia should be written. She did a YA again with princess of Alderaan. And then she did master and apprentice, which honestly just another good one. I do enjoy her adult novels or novels as they call them more than the young stuff. Uh, but this is a young reader. Um, it's obviously the second one came out. It was a little bit of a, a, a squeeze. I think time crunch, how they put it in there. I think it probably was going to play out a little different before the two characters on the front. Just so everybody knows is a Padawan by the name of Reese Silas and a pilot by or co-pilot technically named Afi Ha'ao. Um, they are in these, they're in a couple different groups, uh, and we're going to break down the groups because mainly there's, what would you say about th two groups, three groups when we first come out? Yeah. The, yeah. They, there's a strong two and then there's kind of a small third one. Yeah. But overall, like overall the pacing, I read the book, you two listened to it. Overall, the pacing I thought was pretty good throughout the book. I really did think it was pretty good throughout the book. I had actually, uh, gotten sick in the middle of it so it took two extra days to read it because i was down and out but overall i put it down picked it back up it was a pretty easy read obviously it's a youth novel or whatever the young reader whatever they call it it wasn't too bad how was the voices and stuff with listening to it because i know you guys give good reviews on that how was that uh i mean it wasn't as like i really liked uh lay the jedi because i felt like there was more sound effects and music that really helped like you visualize it and then the descriptions we're just more uh so i it was just just felt like light yeah i think maybe because it was what was your opinion on it there so i know you said something about the time jumping it, it, yeah it wasn't bad and then there's some parts and, and again it made i can't tell if it's me or if it was written because when i'm listening to it i'm doing a lot of driving and, and then pause it and go do service calls come back and all so i get a little gap in there in between um so I don't know if I was missing stuff or it just wasn't it, the detail wasn't there. The voices and background noises were there. And then every now and then you just get this really long stretch of like a background beep. And mm -hmm. and when you're driving and all you can hear in like your left ear is like this beep, yeah. beep, like, beep. <laughs> or like a low hum from a motor while the story is going. And it's like, what's going on right now? <laughs> like it, so it was kind of cool to give you that cockpit feeling or that walking down that hallway feeling. But it, I, there was good and bad about about the way that they did the voices and, and all the soundtrack. With that being said, 98% of this does happen in space. It's a very space-heavy book. There may be a 2% where they're actually on a planet. There is, uh, well, two times. So there's also a flashback portion, which I know you guys said didn't play so well audio. Written-wise, it did. It was very easy to follow the, the playback because they kind of chaptered it out again and gave you a little bit of a break, which was nice because it was a break from the regular storyline, which I always like that type of play anyways. We'll it get was, a little bit more. Go it ahead. Was faster. It was, I think it was like only 10 hours uh, for the, the audio this time. Oh, instead nice. of, yeah. And what was the regular novel? Was the other one was like 
thir- 13? Yeah. 14? Well, I mean, it's look, if you're an adult, you should be able to read a couple extra pages, right? <laughs> I guess. Is that how that works? They just give you a couple more? It costs the same. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so we're going to go through some of the groups and break them down real quickly. As we showed you uh, these two characters, we're going to start with the Jedi side first. Because this, start, this book starts off before the great disaster for everybody knows that the great disaster was that hyperspace thing in the first book if you didn't spoiler alert but like whatever it's not a spoiler um they go over and they start off with uh master jar jora the green names are the masters at this point the yellows are the knights the jedi knights and the blues are the padawans it starts off with jora and her padawan wreath and could you go over those characters real quickly for us just an overview jen so wreath is kind of like the bookworm and he's been on Coruscant his whole entire uh, Padawan uh, experience. And he's happy there. Like, he gets to go on periodic, like, space adventures, but being close to Coruscant. And he gets to uh, go to the Jedi Library, which is his, like, like it's his dream. Because it's all that, like, he loves literature and, like, data and history. Um, and then uh, Jora is, it's interesting because, like, is this before after you find out about des like she's she's a good for it sounds like she's like a good master because she uh-huh. like compliments him but like pushes him a little bit more but then it turns out later that you find out that jor gets reassigned to the starlight beacon and everyone like everyone around him around wreath is like why wow, are you excited to go out to that room and he's like oh how do i get out of this like i, I don't want to go <laughs> like i want to stay he's like there's nothing out there um and it's like super dangerous. Uh, he's like, you know, there's danger here too, and the library and all this, you know. Um, and then Jor's like, no, it's good for you to like branch out and like become, you know, more rounded. And so he's like, okay. So in his head, he's like, I need to show her that I am this already without having to go out there. And I think he tries to do it a couple times, right? Yeah. Yeah. Show like yeah. examples. And then I know yeah, so- one thing, huh? No, go ahead. Oh, the one thing that Marco and I both, when we were like, I was listening to what you're reading it. And she gives him like that that riddle mm-hmm. that uh, crossing the oh shoot the Kyber Bridge yeah and like mm-hmm. if if you if like or Kyber Arc sorry why why uh, Jedi can't walk it alone or they don't walk it alone or yeah why can't Jedi cross the Kyber Arc by themselves yeah alone and then he's yeah. like I'm pretty sure I've seen like Jedi do it by themselves so he's trying to like figure out like the riddle uh, but yeah like. Jen was trying to figure out the riddle too. And um, I was like, uh, I'm not sure you're on the right. And actually she was far ahead for me. She had already listened to portions already. And I was like, well, Hey, uh, just to let you know, I had to put the book down because I had gotten sick and I can't read when I'm sick. So, um, but no, I think you're missing a point unless I haven't uh, catch up on it. And I think we kind of figured it, 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 it plays along a lot of lines of stuff that has played out through the Jedi before, but you brought up Des, which is a very interesting character because Jorah was also Dez's um, master at one point. And he is like the role model, the complete opposite, where Reef is a bookworm and he wants to be the next Jasta New or the prior to Jasta New, Jasta New. Um, head librarian, let's put it that way. Uh, Daz is like the football player, quarterback, Jedi, uh, whatever. The Love guy that goes out there. Yeah, loves the adventure. Yeah, He's the boss character. He gets out there and does everything that he wants to do. And everybody is just jealous of him uh, back on Coruscant because they think he is the cat's meow. Um, a regular Cedric D- Diggory. Oh, yeah. Diggory, but, yeah. You're funny. yeah. That was okay. kind of the, that's kind of what I pictured in the description when, when she was talking about his accomplishments and everything. The Cedric Diggory, you know, Definitely. Quidditch match champ guy from Harry Potter. Definitely. We all love a couple others. Okay. Anyway, so, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so he's there and then you get, but she has to go out onto a mission. She has to go ahead of him. He's supposed to come up in the rear. The The plane doesn't work out. He ends up catching up with a couple of other Jedi that are interesting. One of them is this Des character that they brought up. So he runs into him and it turns out that he's like, oh, well, people at least think this is cool, but he actually does respect Des and he thinks even though Des takes a different journey, he does really like them and they get along pretty well, especially because they have the same master. So they have a connection and he's like, that's kind of cool. But he also runs into Cormac Vis- Vitus and Aura. I'm not even going to say the last name. Genari. Anyways, go ahead. Janari. There we go. And they actually came up at the same time. 
Uh, and they're the two characters that they kind of do a flashback bat. But we'll get into those three parts in one second. So these two are also on the plane, and they meet up with a vessel. They meet up with a vessel, right? Mm -hmm. And on the vessel, there is this group right here that we're about to get into, somebody else that we've already seen on the thing. These are the people in the vessels. Yes, that is a guy with an open shirt and a chain. And um, beads. He, beads. Yeah, beads. Lots, lots of beads. They're not, lots of yeah. beads. <laughs> I will say this. The picture on the right of Geode is a fan art picture. So thank you to, I can't read who the fan art guy is that did it. I probably should have put it there. But I think we'll credit him at the end. Um, we've got a Affy Hollow, who is the co-pilot. We and adopted mother or adopted daughter of somebody that we'll get mm -hmm. into. We got Lennox, who is the overall pirate and master of wearing open shirts and beads. And we've got, got Geode, who is the navigator slash man of mystery. Yes, he is a rock. He is a rock. And this might not sound funny. And this could get to the point of like everything that you, I think we have to address him, right? Like, I don't even think we can go further. When I first, when the character first came out, I was like, okay, I can get the swashbuckling. Like, didn't Lex, Lea, Lea, Leax, didn't he kind of remind you of like uh, Johnny Depp in the, the Pirates of the Caribbean character a little bit, you know, a little bit swashbuckly, a little bit off. I mean, I know he's all hopped up on dope, but like besides that, which was interesting that he's hopped up on dope. But besides that, didn't he kind of like, you know, he kind of breaks the rules, does whatever he wants, is a little bit of a, you know, just here or there type it's character. It's weird because on the audio book, all I could picture was Woody Harrelson. Every time he oh, was yeah. talking, every time he was doing anything, mm. it's a hundred and ten percent Woody Harrelson in that role. I could see that. Yeah, just because of how he was having the back and forth with Geo before we figured out the end of it. Like I saw him kind of more like I was also thinking he was kind of like not quite a pirate, but like a little bit like Han Solo. A mix between a Han Solo type, let's put it that way. A mix between like, well, not even that, like Lando Christian and and Pirates of the Caribbean. Like kind of just yeah. like he's a little bit shifty because I thought I actually thought they were going to do something different with this character. I thought he was going to be like a reformed pirate, which it didn't turn out that that's what he was. That is not true. He was not a reformed pirate. But like I figured that's where they were going to go with it. Um, anyways, so they work for a group. A oh, syndicate. Yeah, go ahead. I, I felt like Geode kind of like I when I read it. I read it that he was like kind of like a Taika Waititi's character from uh, Ragnarok, uh, Korg. Korg, yeah. yeah That's yeah, kind of what yeah. I was picturing. Yeah. So real quickly, Geo does not talk at all. I didn't even think of it like that. You remember those? Uh, remember in He Man where they had the uh, the the characters that transformed into like a meteorite rock and came down? Or no, oh, yeah. this is this is oh, telling yeah. everybody all that. That's yeah. what I pictured. I pictured like one of those that like the blue and white one, and just because. This character never comes out of a rock form. I figured at the end they'd pop him up into a rock form, which never happened. He is just a, this is his um, being. Like he is, that's his species is this rock. And they keep playing this game at the beginning where they play with you to figure out, is he actually, are they moving the rocks? Is Afi and like the Jedi, I think Afi and Leox have got something going yeah. funny on here. They're moving himself and he's not really doing anything. We'll get into that a little bit more later. However, uh, they are part of a group called the Brine Guild, Brine Guild, B Y N E Guild, and um, the leader of that guild adopted Alfie, which is important later on to the story. So uh, Lennox kind of picked her up and put him under. They're kind of just like this ragtag group, and you know who wants to train the the stepdaughter of the leader of your guild, right? So she got on with them because they are different and they don't judge her. So. These people pick up the Jedi and they say, we'll ship you out to where you're going to Starlight Beacon. We'll take you out there because we have some other cargo. They definitely hint that there's something shady going on, but like nothing too shady. Um, Leix, he is addicted to uh, death sticks, kind of, right? Mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. He chews on them a lot and stuff like that. They aren't exactly illegal at this point. They're just kind of frowned upon. Maybe, I mean, they're illegal in the Republic, but th there's not a lot of Republic out there. So they're kind of frowned upon. They get into that. There's also a lot of questions going on about the Jedi. There's a lot of questions going on about the Jedi because people don't see Jedis out there that much. Even though there's a ton of Jedis, people don't know about the Jedis that much. They've never heard really about it. It's just all rumors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And this is one group that kind of hasn't really heard of them before. They ask them some interesting questions and stuff. 
so they go through and they're taking him out to Starlight Beacon, and then all of a sudden, the great disaster happens, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it drops him out of hyperspace, and it drops a bunch of other ships out of hyperspace. Well, of course, the Jedi have to step up, so they go out there and try to round up. Well, with that being said, our boy, uh, Wreath, is not one of the ones that wants to help everybody out initially, isn't it, right? But then they're like, yeah, we should probably reach out, and we should just help everybody and communicate. They get communication back from somebody named Nan, who's this girl Mm -hmm. who has, like, she has a, what what is it, like, an elderly patriarch or something that overwatches her? Yeah, a ward. Yeah, a ward. Yep. And they go like, hey, listen, thank God you're not pirates. We appreciate it. Like, we really just need to do something. And they find out that a flare is coming, so they have to dock someplace or be safe. The only thing that's close to them is this station right here. Yeah. The Amiexin station, which is an older race. They get in there and they hide from the flare. Um, now, it was a warrior race. They set up the station so that at one point they could go out and attack other planets. That's what everybody thought, but for some reason had never done it. This picture, as you can see, if you are watching this, not just listening to it, is out of a comic book. It actually comes out of Kylo Ren number one. If you remember that great series, uh, that was by Soul, and uh, the art was by, uh, uh, what was his name? Slay, Slay Me, the guy from Ireland. Really cool book. If you hadn't read that many, or you, sh- you should, these are a couple pages for it. Um, Kylo Ren actually flies there and then gets some daddy hug time with um, Snook. I, that, well, that's what they're doing. It's weird. Man, I got to tell you, it's weird, but whatever. Um, and they're actually inside. So you get to see inside of what this would look like. I know you guys said, like, I was our, I actually thought it was bigger than this when I imagined scale. Because when you're reading it, you're talking about all the levels they're on. So I thought it was a little bit bigger than this. They did a good job, uh, description-wise, in the book at least, explaining, like, how it's like a planetarium almost. Not plan. You know what I'm talking about. And, like, how it's on different levels and how everything was overgrowing and just... And how the droids were taking care of all the the overgrow and stuff like that. So I imagined it was massive. Is that not the case in your situation through the audiobook? Yeah, I, I didn't like. I, I was talking solo about this. We were both talking about it. Uh, that yeah, I didn't think it was that massive. Like I knew it was big, right? Because through the whole entire book, they're going to different levels. But I was just picturing like a big like space station, like that that was huge. I didn't think that it was like world <laughs> like a moon yeah 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 I, I i figured it was closer to almost like the death star a little bit smaller than the death star style you know center with with the rings around it the the description in the audiobook was not it didn't do it justice mm-hmm. I, I it felt very um it felt very chopped up yeah you do get to see a little bit more of it in Kylo Ren 2, just real quickly, and you get to see the inside. And actually, uh, they do bring up that at one point there was like a, like they tried to capture a dark force inside here, which was a little bit leading into this story. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Jen. Go. Oh, I thought they did a better job, like talking about uh, Nans and her uh, elder ward. Uh, like their ship was more descriptive. Like the way they're t- talking about how it was like ships combined and how. The Jedi thought that was interesting. Like the younger Jedi, Wreath uh, was like, "Oh, it's interesting. Like that's weird." And then the other ones were like, "Oh no, when you're out here in the outer rims, like you kind of have to like salvage and like put things together." But like they, they when they described it at first, I was like, "Huh, it sounds like something else." Come, it did. It sounded exact. When you read it, it sounded exactly like something else. And gave something away early on. Yeah. Um. So this Nan character is very interesting. So she pulls up. They pull up a lot of these ships, and. Um, our, our crew here of the vessel is like, oh boy, I don't think the Jedi know what they got themselves into because like two of the groups that pull up instantaneously try to loot this thing and they just start fighting and they're mm-hmm. rummaging around and everything like that. Other groups don't get along. The yeah. Nam person gets like kidnapped at one point yeah. and Reef comes to the rescue and cuts off the kidnapper's arm. Mm-hmm. Then the Jedi have to go through there and like take them all down well, Affie, uh, or, that's what Effie said like she was like watching them like duck she was like oh no like they don't know what they're doing like because she thought that they were like I don't know godlike I guess Jedi were kind of like they have these like extra powers but she's like they are not those aliens don't get like those groups don't get along like this you is can't dock them bad. next to each other yeah. <laughs> yeah that was really it it was like you can't dock them next to each other it went south really quickly mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, you start to get flashbacks 
where they explain the relationship. They explain some of the relationships from earlier on, like 25 years ago. And it, it really, I actually found this story really intriguing too. I, it didn't play out as good as I hoped it would either, but it really goes back to um, the Jedi master Vitus and Orla. And like, they at one point were on, they were on a diplomatic mission mm -hmm. um, to help these two. It pretty much, these groups were like um, Romeo and Juliet. It was like, I can't remember the last name of those two families, but it was two families that lived really close to each other and they didn't even know why they were fighting. The Hatfield and the McCoys, whatever you want to call it. They were fighting at it for. And... Oh, now you're making me a brand. There you go. Montague Either way. And... Yeah. My... Yes. Right. That's you're right. But they were fighting back and forth. They didn't even know why anymore. What happens is both one person from each family, the queen's wife or whatever gets kidnapped from one. And one of the male, the husband to somebody else or a prince gets captured from another one. And it's pretty much set up by the hunts because the huts want this part of space, which is where they end up putting the twilight beacon Mm -hmm. They the the huts want that space to be chaotic so that they nobody ever trusts anybody and the huts can pretty much just take advantage. It was a cool insight to see that. What happens though is Vitus and Aura's master pretty much gets killed early on, and they have to survive going through tunnels and somehow save the day. We'll probably get a little bit more into that, but that's one of the three themes going through this that they keep going back to is like the um, conflict that Aura and Vitus have between what happened to their master. Yeah. And how they're going to get away from that with the Jedi Order, and then uh, you have Reith, who is always like his is like kind of like coming to, um, you know, coming to life. Yeah. yeah, he's getting experience. He, he's read a bunch of it, but he's never experienced anything yeah. like good visceral experience one on one. So this is definitely, you're right. I mean, it's it's his coming to. Yeah, coming to age story, like something like to that that effect. And you know it gets a little bit over his loathing. It's he seems very teenagerish, but that's a, it's a it's a YA, so like you you're gonna get that you're gonna get your coming to age story. So that really is. And then you get the Affy story, which is kind of like uh, she's finding out about the guild and she's finding about her mom and she's kind of figuring out like what's going on there too because there is something that plays into that. So while they're all running around, they kind of start to break up, not just to get all these Ruthians and Hulians back together and warn them that they have to get off this this planetarium thing. But they also kind of find out that there is some form of dark force there and something's going on with these three artifacts. Mm -hmm. Now, they break up. There is – we will talk about this. Should we talk about this now, about the the, the Nan thing? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, I think I am. Yeah. It's as good a time as any yeah. to get in. So, it, really. I, I, honestly, I got a lot of messages early on on this. I'm sorry that I didn't get the review out earlier. But a lot of people asked me a question, and the question was like, what's up with this with the Jedi being able to marry now and everything else? Okay. Um, I'm not going to get into what people do for clickbait videos. It would be very easy. We could do it with these videos. We'd probably get a lot more views than we do, but we're not going to. The bottom line is this. We took this in a couple different ways. I didn't even know about it when I first read the portion of it. It was Nan asking a question about, is there relationships going on with the Jedi? Reith pushes off to the side and says, instead of trying to explain what goes on, I'm just going to tell them, like, Jora has this big, long explanation. And if you knew Jora's explanation, each person's explanation is tailored to somebody else. Yeah. How I understood it was, and how I read it was, Jora's explanation, or what he was referring to as the explanation, is how you have a relationship with a higher power. As in, like, how priests and nuns get married to a higher power. I'm not going to get into theology here. But that's what I saw out of it. I know they use a lot of theology in Star Wars. He decides to say to her, yeah, we're monks. That way he can end the conversation. So he doesn't have to have, because remember, he's a teenager and he thinks some girl is flirting with him. And I'm not quite sure he wants to have a celibacy conversation with her. Now, if you are on the other hand and thought that that decision is about, oh, Jedi can get married and have relationships. And you think this is out of the realm of Star Wars, then you've never read Air of the Empire or, well, you just don't know much about Luke Skywalker. Either way, I don't see a problem with it. But I do think that this is one of those cases where I think it's a lot of clickbait. And really, it was just like a once over pass on. They did address somebody else's. I mean, it's a teenager book. They addressed somebody else's sexuality at one point. They What was it? Solo with Le Le the, the pilot um, yeah. talks about his uh, inornate for not needing it and how he's just uh, married to the ship and, and the travel and the space and, and just flying around and. It's less drama and better way of life and just easier. He's tried it, but it's not for him. 
He just but, has a good yeah. time flying around. And I get it, dude. People out there are trying to entertain people, and they need 30 minutes or 40 minutes or 45 minutes of contact. This was like a sentence, by the way, that they took out of, and it was a paragraph on his portion of it. Yeah. Read the book. Make up your own mind. It really is irrelevant. I don't think uh, anybody's uh, – whatever, dude. I, that's all I have to say. Jen, do you have anything to add to that? I mean, I just thought it was funny when people were like, I thought they're supposed to be celibate. And it's like, uh, I mean, they talked about, is it? Ma- Mandalorians are supposed to take their helmets off either. Yeah. Right? And that's like, <laughs> come with me, right? Like, had, had like, like some wives because of the, you know, like, there's just, it's been talked about before. But I think people just choose to like forget about it and put them in that, like, no, I think people that don't know much about Star Wars are doing clickbait videos. That's what I think is happening. But that's fine. Um, uh, so, that's all we're going to address with that, I guess. So they have this conversation, but then Nan is definitely like, there is a part where Reef is like, Hey, listen, she's flirting with me. And I'm not really down with that. Like I'm a Jedi. This is how it is. I'm just going to 86 this and be like, Hey, listen, we're, well, we're, it's his first time. He doesn't know how to deal. With I, he doesn't know totally how to handle it at all because this is his first time anywhere outside of the temple yeah. and the library. So yeah. Where people are like, questioning him and asking questions. Wow. And you have to remember, like there's a lot of, people out there that are curious like jedi at this point are just they're they they're kind of like later on where people were just telling rumors about jedi nobody really knew what they were but they've just heard things about them and they're weird and they're whatever it is so nan keeps going out with the nunk thing they decide to all go down to the sub levels and check out some stuff when they get down to the sub levels it pretty much the, there's a part here that's tough and it's really early on it was written well once again but our man does gets stuck in what could be considered a, a hyper uh, chamber, which ends up, what typically they're used for is they get these heated up po- um, parts and it lights up gas and it will shoot. It'll almost be, remember, hyper lanes aren't really developed right now. So what originally this thing was, was so that these, it could shoot pods to different planets really fast. So he gets stuck in one of those and it lights up and ignites and incinerates him. He's gone. There's nothing left. Uh, the, all the Jedi on there feel that there's something lost. When they get back upstairs to the two, to the Master Jedi and the other knight, they say, hey, listen, there's this dark force that's been messing with us, right? And we have to get off this planet. We have to get off this thing, and we got to get everybody out of here. And that's when they tell them, hey, Dez died. He got incinerated. Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, and they feel a little something. They feel like, oh, yeah, he's definitely not here anymore. Like, But we have to get these, because they found these Sith relics that they feel are causing like a dark force issue. And they're seeing these visions and they think if they don't get these artifacts off the, the planetarium thing here, that it could cause a real big issue. If normal people got there or if all these people left their ships again, there could be some innocence and it could cause problems. They also want to figure what's going on with like the hyper lanes, because remember there's stuff just shooting out of it at this point. So they pack up. So wreath, Affy, he forgot Affy when she gets when they first get there sees the the guild like writing on the walls and she's like what like what's this like so and then so like if you had a picture when they first get here it, yeah it's it's what you're seeing that big like massive right but then inside it's it's like an, an arboretum has overgrown and at first like this is weird like right like it's just growing everywhere um and so the Affie's thing about like seeing the guild writing and going like, what is this? And then going deeper too. She, she went deeper, right? She did. She went both. She went yep. deeper and up. And then which she one followed it? it. She followed it up. Cause she kept going up because up on the levels. Cause she was fought. What happened was like the guild code, it was different guilds. And then she thought that she was reading it and she couldn't understand all of it, but start to make more sense. Cause the symbols were starting to make more sense. And she figured out that somebody in the guilds, that people in the guilds were leaving messages there. And her conclusion was that these people were trying to rip off her stepmom in the guild. So she kept doing more and more research and following it more and more and more. And was and it then, her that got, I, I, it's, it's been like, like a week or two, but uh, who got scratched? Was it her? That vine? Yeah. No, the, the, is it her that gets put? Yeah, is it her? Yes, it, it is, is her. her. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then they have to give her. The they have to give her, yeah, they just give her so she gets scratched by a vine and they have to end up giving her a pack because she sees she also sees her old family crest. So like her original mom and dad's pretty much family sign or family crest. It's not called a family crest, I think it's called a, a whatever it is. But uh they it's a family crest and she sees it and then she's like, Oh wow, so something happened to happen with the guild and my original parents, and then it 
kind of comes to, they actually have to rush her off. Wreath and the other three have to get do a spell. Spell. Wait, it is. What point are they? Are the oh, shoot? I remember a scene where the people are all fighting each other, and then the Jedi guy had to like levitate, and then like. <clears throat> that was before they. That was before they went down, and he blew okay. up. That was when they were chasing him down. When those two groups were going at it, they kidnapped Nan. F, you know, they kidnapped Nan around there, and the yeah. one guy's like, "Oh, you monks aren't going to do anything." And no, they cut the dude's head. Like wreath the librarian, which that was weird too, because like he just had gotten done. Like I'm a monk, and like she is. She she's flirting with me, and I got to make sure that doesn't happen. But then he's like, "Oh, I'm a librarian," and then he just. Well, it's another one, man. I mean, if if Star Wars has a book or a novel where they don't cut somebody's hand off, he didn't want to at first, though. He warned him, and the guy like laughed at him, and he's like, "Well, if I have to." I, I actually guess. thought it was kind of ba like how he did it too. He's like, he because he thought about tech, you know. He's like, "Well, I can't let him kidnap a little girl because then this would happen. She'd be sent to slavery and all this stuff, and this is the downfall." So I have no other choice, like. He's doing math in his head. If he has any other choice to come up with a solution, no other choice. So then just as casually as the day is long. And this is a guy who like does, doesn't have a lot of warrior instinct goes like, yeah, boom, done. Okay. Hand on ground. I warned you. Uh, give you a chance. <laughs> like, Do you make a, a joke about like prosthetics? No, it was, I don't think it was a joke. I think it was like he was serious. Like, oh, okay. well, they do have very good prosthetics now. It was, it might've been joking. He says, he says uh, that the, I understand that the, Hand and arm prosthetics are better than the leg prosthetics. Yeah, why? Well, yeah, he lobs so, his arm. Off. Lobs his arm off. Yeah, so he's like, that's what I was saying. Like he's analytically thinking about it. Like, oh well, I could also take off his arm because it makes better prosthetics, and then that way, like that's why I don't think it was a joke. Like it's, it turns out to be very ba. Like it's cool how, but that's that's where you gotta give great credit, right? Like she writes a lot of double stuff. Like it's it depends. I don't know how the voice actors were, but how Grace did stuff. If you've read some of her stuff in the past, like you know that she does that doubling with stuff. So like now all of a sudden you take into consideration where she's like, oh no, she's sticking with it. It's I don't know if he was was he laughing while he was saying that in the audio or was it? It just felt like kind of light. Like oh da 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 da, and it's like that seems kind of light for what you're about to do. Yeah, no, it seems like a a. a uh, um, a knowledgeable joke or like a, a smart joke the way that it came across in the audio to me like a um, a very intellectual you know what I mean like well I'm going to lob your arm off but in you know in doing so I'm kind of helping you out because arm prosthetics are really good I mean almost like a Sheldon Cooper joke yeah Okay, yeah, so I saw it a little bit differently. And hey, if you have a different opinion, go down below, leave us a comment down there. We definitely look at the comments, even if it's months later, and we'll comment back on it. But hey, I I saw it as he was just breaking it down scientifically and was like, I could take his leg, but the prosthetics are bad, or the arm prosthetics are better. Because I'm a Jedi, I have to, and like in his head going like, it's to cause the least amount of damage, because yeah. he kind of gets into it later. Like, sure. as a Jedi, well, you're supposed makes, to cause the least amount of damage. Sense. But like, I mean, hey, it was funny. But that's what I'm saying. Someone, it was funny. If someone told you that, I would let go immediately and be like, "Oh, wait, I don't want anything." Like, I'll I don't want any prosthetics. <laughs> but these, the two groups that he was dealing with were guys that punch first and ask later. Yeah. And when it, when he didn't punch first, they're like, "You guys are yeah, right. You guys are peacekeepers. Get out of here. You're just rumor and boogeyman, and we don't care about you so much." Yeah. But I think that's, <clears throat> I think uh, Geo, like that's where some of the good writing gets into that too, because then Geo's like doing navigation stuff at this point. He's getting the ship ready. Mm -hmm. He's like, they're like, where is he? Did he beat somebody up? Who knows? Somehow Either way. He's interlinked with the ship to punching coordinates for the mm -hmm. hyperdrive and for the So they say, but nobody and... sees him. Like he's in the lunchroom somehow, but nobody saw how he got there. Like <laughs> it's just, they're just always talking to him. And the Jedi are starting like still going to him and going like, all right, I'll talk to him like a normal being, but like we don't know. There, it seems like there's some type of force there, but like that was the one thing I didn't understand. Why did they just reach out with the force and be like, is this thing alive or is it not alive? Well, I, I kind of also felt like it's what Drax wanted to do when he was like in Guardians of the Galaxy when he was moving really slow. I just felt like maybe he moved so slow, like or kind of like um, what's that game uh, in Mario where those ghosts move and you're not looking at them. Yeah. So yeah. whenever you don't look at him, is when he's moving really slow. You look back and you're like, what the like. 
right? See, like, I don't know. That's what kind of was. So how it reads, it does read like somebody's moving this rock around, like this big, <laughs> enormous rock. It's just getting moved somehow. And you don't know if, if and because of the character of Le, Le, uh, Lex, how do you say his name? Leox? Leox? Yeah. How you how the character Leox, you wonder if it's like he really uses the death stick because he has the force and he is force picking up this thing and shifting it around because it seems like it's too big for them to pick up, but they <clears throat> treat it legit. So and like Jay even know say they don't know if it's a joke or not. Um I for this, I really if they do a live action, I'd like to see Dwayne Johnson play this character. That'd be perfect. That would be perfect. That would. It would be a funny joke too. <laughs> it would. Um so, needless to say, they get the artifacts on board. They've now wrapped them in the force bond so that they cannot cause any more damage. Can't leak, leak the uh, dark side of the force out. They have got Affy on there, and she is in the medical bay, and they have used, not back, uh, but they've used whatever the other substitute is to kind of help her out. Um, and they're, unfortunately, everybody gets off. And they make their way back to Coruscant. Now, when they get back to Coruscant, we break up into some of the storylines too. Uh, Affy is fine now, but her stepmom turns out to be there too. So does a lot of the other guild members. Mm -hmm. And Affy then starts to think, you know something? I'm not quite sure my stepmom is as clean as I thought she was. Now, remember, Affy at this point is supposed to take over for the stepmom. When, oh, you know, the stepmom. It's because she finds out about the indentured. Yeah, indentured service. Well, that was because she kind of asked some questions, but then she goes into, so she's getting a little feeling that everything's a little bit roughed up and she grabs the iPad or data pad or whatever you want to call it. And she starts going through it and finds out that these are indentured, that they, the people pretty much going to that planetary thing may have been indentured servants and they may have been getting time off their indentured servitude if they take, Short it, yeah, shortcuts. More, and more then, risky travels in in more risky jobs and more jobs that you necessarily wouldn't want to do but if it takes off double your time or extra time then yeah. uh, so what so what they were doing was they were going into those areas those tubes that had those rings the hyper rings and they were trying to use their ships to push it fast out through like made up hyperspace lanes and it was blowing up the ships unfortunately mm -hmm. then that's where des died was in that thing on the other hand, uh, they have to now go back and Reith has to find out that his master's dead and that he has to pick his own, he can pick his own path now. They, he also has to say that um, his buddy's dead and he finds out because how they start describing it, that Nan, Nan is not who he thought it was. Nan wasn't a little girl. Nan turns out to be a Nile. On top of that, our Jedi friends, our little master and wayfinder, find out that they didn't they didn't capture the the Sith artifacts to stop the dark side of the Force, in, but they actually um, revealed they let go a new bad guy, I guess. And here we go. So we've got the, the Nile then are revealed as the bad guy, and so are the Dangir. Um, Dangir. Yeah, the Jangir are like a plant-based species. We don't know much about it, but both groups now, um, all that Jedi that are still left alive are like, hey, we have to go back there. Um, you know, you get you get uh, Vitas really feeling bad about mm -hmm. taking out there, and so is Orla. And at the same time, you have Reef going, man, I let the Nile sit out there. There's something I have to do. I can't let this night hill just be out there. Well, it's, be it's because of uh, you find out that uh, his master was killed. He found his master was killed by the night hill. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. he's like, he kind of wants a little bit of vengeance. Yeah. But then he's, he's so like, nice. Yeah. And when, when they save Nan and she's asking him a ton of questions because she, the, like Marco was saying, there's no Jedi in that area. They're kind of a myth. And now all of a sudden Jedi, monks quote unquote slash wizards show up and start so she's just drilling him for questions asking him everything and and he's just telling her free will you know just giving her all kinds of information because he's very book smart and he's like ha look at how book smart i am and then realizes at this point oh you're nil and you were drilling me for information 
I should not have told you about half of what I said. Yeah, it wasn't just that he told Deny Hill about it. It was that he, like, he was supposed, I mean, that was part of it. They were supposed to be these peacekeepers that educated him. So he did it, felt bad about it. But this is what the council says. First off, you don't have a Jedi Master anymore, and you need some time, but whatever. The other two Jedi, they say, we're not telling you, uh, we're telling you that, well, they don't tell him they can't do it. Like, this is the funny part. Jen, are you disagreeing on this? Well, okay, they don't say every word of, like, you cannot go back to this place. But they don't say that they can go back. And the fact that they had to, like, sneak the artifacts back onto a plane or a ship and then find a, like, a ship to, to go. They there. said they had to move them. They moved them. They said yeah. they had to find a place for them. They found a I place know. for them. But the whole point is as they're going and they're like talking about it, like later, like Reith, cause Reith is like, okay, well we can't get in trouble. And then later when they're like, oh yeah, you, we might get kicked out of the order. And he's like, yeah. wait, but I thought, and he's like, well, you know, like they didn't say not to, but they didn't say to. So it's like murky water. Like you might just lose being a Jedi. We, but I exactly thought it was great. You said from a certain point of view. From a certain point of view. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. From a, they played a certain point of view. It was so cool to do it yeah. that way. It was so cool to do a certain point of view from there. It was so cool because, you, you know, they've done it before. Like the whole Qui Gon Jin thing. Like yeah. even Obi's done when it before. You're Padawan, though. And you're like, wait. Well, he wasn't going to get in trouble. Did I break the rules? And then later it comes into play again. And then, like, how the other Jedi, like, they weren't that worried. They're like, hmm, like, whatever's going to happen is going to happen, right? And well, then do know like, that like she was um she, she was going to be a wayfinder because well, as they keep doing these fast as as they keep doing these breakaways, you know, uh yeah, Orla was gonna do the be a, a wayfinder because she that's like where you go off and you pretty much the council can't really tell you what to do. You're going on almost like a pilgrimage, but you're also doing whatever you want, kind of like the Voss type character without you know, I mean that's what it was, and she was gonna do that, and as far as as far as Venice, he was just, he was going out into the wild and was just going to write encyclopedias and stuff. Like yeah. they were not, they were on their way anyways. Like this wasn't like, Hey, if they got kicked out, I don't think yeah. it would have made much of a difference between well, it. Cause they both had their, like the Jedi rules were not making sense. Right. Like, and that was the whole thing is that like, they're, they're trained to follow the force and intuition. And like, that's the force trying to lead you, but it's like, no, but these Jedi rules supersede that. And it's like, but that's in conflict because what if the rule is saying this, but the force is telling me to do this. Right. But I think his problem too, is he never got over his master dying and what ended up happening with that part. And they let you know about that fallback is that they ended up saving both uh, the Romeo and Juliet character. Well, no, they save one. Yeah. Uh, Romeo ends up sacrificing himself to save Juliet. They save Juliet and blow up the hunt's plan. And that's where those two families came together and now they were allowed to build the starlight beacon out there. And it was a shining light where he just had never really gotten over his master dying. And he thought he's had some type. It's about the attachment and having attachment. Yeah. And like, you can like, and it was, that's like the weird thing. It's like, wait, he died. And see, that goes back to the whole Jorah. Like if you're in love with the force or if you're not like, that's what, that's why I'm saying. Like, that's what that whole, the link back to, it wasn't actually about, people getting Jedi getting married. It was actually the physical attractment link. Like how do you have an attachment to something like you're not supposed to, but at the same time, you're supposed to be attached to the force. Like, I mean, look, that's a deep dive and probably a little bit too intense for a youth uh, novel and maybe great for a philosophy class. They have gotten into it before. And like, that's great. I think because of what has happened with uh, the YouTubers, as they say, or the YouTubes and the IGs, Maybe people blew that out of proportion. Right. But like, that's always, that's always been a part of it is always like, how is an attachment, whatever, a little bit deep for some of the smarter kids. Um, I'm not that smart. So I didn't, man, whatever. Anyhow. So they all decide that they're going to avoid what the council said or skirt the rules. And they are going to go back out. Well, guess who wants to go back out to? Of course, the vessel wants to go back out. Cause they're actually on the way out. This did was kind of, did you like right. the vessel is the vessel? Yeah. I thought I thought a lot of stuff was clever. It was like just the childish. Is named the vessel, kind of like the rock, is named Geode because yeah. you can't pronounce the name because they. Yeah, it, yeah, there's a lot of clever, unclever things that happen in this. But they don't try to make it. They like make fun of it too. They make fun yeah. of how yeah. corny it is. It's like yeah, it's like they know what they're. That's what I'm saying with Gray. Like she's like, 
yeah, I'm not going to treat you like idiots. I know what I did here. I called the vessel the vessel. Like, I yeah. get it. Like, and I'm not trying to pull one over. You know, I'm not trying to pull a Jar Jar. I'm just telling you, like, this is... I, what I do you want me to really, do? Here? I did really like her description of um, when he was talking about how he feel or how she feels about the vessel. It, it was very... Um, she's very passionate about the vessel. Yeah, like, yeah. like, the vessel is its own character right. to her. And yeah. it's it's almost that passion. Because, I mean, she comes out and says, yeah, it's the vessel. It's it's small. It's a hunk of junk. It needs parts. It's hobbled together. It doesn't fly well. But it's mine. That very uh, Falcon solo kind of connection. Yeah. It was written <clears throat> very well in the description of how um, <clears throat> the girl feels about the vessel. Yeah. It is too. And I think the second portion of this book, when you start to go back towards, um, you know, when they start going back out there, when you start seeing even how Lee X has developed now, now it's no longer just chewing on death sticks and like, yeah, whatever kid. Now he's like, you you keep digging. I'm going to start giving you answers. And like, yeah. it becomes a little bit more in depth. And that's what I'm saying about her writing in depth, the characters, like there is some things that she did really good and she always does in depth of characters. And I thought that that whole group was somebody she did a very good job with the majority of them. I, I do think she did a great job with, but either way, so they're headed out there anyways, because she wants more answers now. Cause now yeah. she knows she's pretty sure that her stepmom is doing something. She just wants to know because she saw her parents on the ledgers. If they had something to do with the two. Well, and she also wants to like save her. She's like, if I can get her this proof and like talk to her about it, I could save her. I can like turn her from her, her ways yeah it's very naive um but whatever in the meantime the jedi come up and say hey uh we have to go back out there so let's take another trip out to the Am amexian and they said sure we'll charge you full rate and then they have like this cool little interval should we tell them that we're going out there anyways no nah, dude they don't need to know that we'll charge yeah. you full rate yeah. so they charge them full rate as they get out there uh the nile are all over the place and they're like, hey, we have to get back in. Um, the Nile were described more a little bit of this type of character here that we see as, you know, I mean, they had their helmets on and all, but it wasn't so much what you saw in the comics, I would think, and everything like that. It was just briefly, and they didn't they didn't say much about them. Um, they do a little tricky, tricky sneak around to get on. Um, the people from the vessel really don't want to get on, but then Affy gets out anyway because she has to go. Lennox and the rock stay there. What's up, Brock? Um, but it was pretty cool. I thought that was all good how they got back on there. They're, they're, they're trying to get things back in there. This is the good part. So uh, Alfie, then this was kind of cool. Like I, I, we can all mention our favorite parts in there, but my favorite part was when Alfie used a detonator and just blew the crap out of it. I didn't see that coming. I didn't yeah. see it coming. So yeah. she's like, there's these little devices that are going around and trimming everything to keep the brushery down and everything like that. And they have to do things to get around them. It was kind of, it makes a lot of sense. We're not going to technically break it all down. Read the book, what they had to do. But pretty much you had to have a plant on you. And it was what it was. Um, but she, Alfie gets stuck. And then she sees all the nil coming on, or Nihil coming on. And she wants to take care of it. So she throws a detonator. And, like, body parts are flying. Like, and she, there's no, I mean, the description in the book is pretty graphic, which is nice. I mean, whatever. It is what nice. It is what it is. They did a very well job with it. And then on the other part, you get to see Reith go down to the sub levels again because he thinks Dan's down there and he ends up hitting, getting, going in, looking for like, maybe there is something, maybe Des is down here someplace. And it turns out where Des actually was, wasn't just raw tunnel with rings. It actually was a pod. And when the pod closes, it shoots Reith out. Uh, does anybody want to cover this part? I mean, he is, it's, it's fine. So he, he gets shot to another planet. Uh, he lands the Drangar are there. There's chaos ensues, but then you find out it, it, this is where it kind of jumps a little bit too, at least in the audio where you now see Des's point of view of having like a head wound and they're like, God, tormenting him. And so Des is alive, by the way. Yeah. Des is on a planet 
with a lot of these characters, these plant characters. And they're characters. poisoning him. And, and they're, yeah, they're kind of using poison. She doesn't explain it that well, but they're using like some poisoning. They're trying to figure out what he's about. If there's a way for them to get back to this way station, they explain that they were the species that destroyed the Amnex race. Like they're the ones that took over for there. And then they got stuck down here. They couldn't get back. They do know about, they actually mentioned something really cool. They mentioned that the Sith actually trapped them up there. They know that the Sith did it. Like it's not, this is not like some surprise, some dark force. These Sith were around yeah. and in masses. They were in enough where they could do this because it's not one person or two. Under my explain, under how I understood it, it took more than two people to put the artifacts kind of into place yeah. originally. Right. Well, even it, they brought up like at first they thought it was the Jedi, but then when the lightsabers were drawn, they're like, oh no, 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 not these. The ones with the red. And you're yeah, like, the red one. Oh shoot. The Sith didn't like these people. Like, hmm. So that? it seems like it was and, and how they reference I mean it could be acolytes or but it was somehow with the Sith. It it, it seemed like there's a a, a decent group of these people around someplace. So they're probably still out. I mean, look, they gotta be out there, right? Somewhere. Anyways, so they get down there. They're, it's really well written because you feel bad um, in how they did it. The part that I didn't enjoy so much is how they they play the drain gear, the plants. Well, you you were saying, what's that movie? Little Shop of Horrors? Little Shop of Horrors, yeah. Audrey yeah. too. So they talk to themselves. They make jokes towards themselves. They're always talking about eating everything. And like, it really just was like, okay. Then they're like, oh, you go kill the other thing. You kill other things. Like all of a sudden they have like great dialogue. They can speak proper basic. And then all of a sudden now it's three word basic. They're down to you kill thing bad. Like what are you, what is going on here? Like it was, it wasn't well. Uh, um, I, I, I hope they, improve the character it, it uh, kind of drops off but in the now in the book it kind of seemed like they were doing that on purpose like they because they had felt like they m didn't want to reveal too much information and now right. that they had des captured poisoned who was telling them some things and then wreath there now they were trying to get information out of wreath so at one point they kind of stopped and they're like, well, maybe if we ask too many large sentences, he's going to figure something out. Let's really dial back the intellect and, of what we're asking and stop talking to him. And that Wait, is that it kind of like in the office, ends. like in the office when uh, Kevin was like, why use many word when few words good? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it did not read well, in my opinion. It was really bad. It was really bad, and I was very disappointed because as much as the Nihil characters have turned out to be just, in my opinion, rock star, uh, classic bad guys, like, uh, souped up. Yeah. That's all I can say. <laughs> so Audrey, too, plant, and and Reese is freaking out. He's like, please, you know, he's thinking, stop how they even got referring away. to me as meat. I'm not meat. I'm a yeah. Jedi. Yeah. And so it, 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 it was a little weird well, towards the, the end of their conversation. Yeah, on that and then Dez fights, like, so Dez all hopped up on whatever, fights Reese, doesn't really know, like, what's going on. Reese holding back is like, oh, my God, you're alive. And then does something, and they, yeah, they escape on one of the pods. He brings up his old master. Yeah, who like passed away, and then they escape. But then all of a sudden, now these plant-based species that weren't smart enough to get away can now figure out. Oh wait, we can just get in these shuttle things that yeah, been here. Okay, you're right. Well, yeah, was, and then was, they shoot themselves back to. So they pretty much shoot themselves back to the station. So now the they couldn't and, figure out the line. So once they had a, a pod to follow back to the ship, then they could follow that line that was already there because it was already pre-programmed. Yeah, but the species before they kind of explained had put it there that it was pre-programmed to go back and forth to there anyway. So they, what well, it doesn't matter. That's irrelevant. <laughs> so they get back, and that's a little bit of a chase scene or whatever. So now Wreath and the live Des are back to the Ami Exion station, and in pursuit are the plant-based species. Uh, yeah, there you go. The drain gear. So I was picturing more like more humanoid plant creature. And then yeah, when I saw the, the, the art, I was like, yeah, I'll show you the actual art of it too in a minute. More swamp thing ish. This is, yeah. I mean, this is kind of like even how it was written out that I saw it. This is going to be a cover of a uh, upcoming book too. Oh, that's cool. Uh, they're in the background, they're, you know, peeping up everywhere. So they're all over. It's not just one, it's a bunch. And the, 
they don't have hive mind, which is weird that they don't have a hive mind. I don't know. Uh, there's well, a lot of holes in that. And then figures out that he saw all the drain gear on the station, but they were like in some kind of like hibernation. And he's like, uh Oh yeah. And at the same time now, the other two Jedi are back fighting that. And they're like, Hey, we actually, this was a reason why the Sith artifacts were here. We need to, or whatever the three artifacts they figure out are Sith artifacts. We have to put these Sith artifacts back to hold these things down. Also a part that I found disappointing is, um, it doesn't matter how many times you slice dice or if you hit a heart or a main artery or cut their face completely in half. They just come back together. Like, I so, get it, but like, no, no, I understand. Like, but there should be like a kill point on them, I think, maybe. Uh, like, you're kind of making it weird. Like, the only way to do it is completely incinerate them. Look, Swamp Thing came back as a potato. So, Swamp Thing can do that. They can do that. <laughs> 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 okay, so um, so anyways, to shorten up the... I don't know. If you guys want to talk more about that, we can, but I'd rather shorten up that portion of it because I just it just was not my favorite part. Um, either way... I'm sure they, they will. I'm, come on, I'm sure they will. Like I don't think that character's going to get any better. Wreath uh, gets back... Yeah, no, I, I don't. It's going to be tough. Wreath gets back. If they made Hive Mind, maybe, but we can talk about it. So Wreath gets back. He got dads. They're falling down. And then all of a sudden, he figures out, oh, wait, if I just push off the pad thing, lock him in and ignite it. How I thought he does died. Oh, we could kill these things. So he did. And he killed some of them there. And at the same time, they were somehow now controlling the outside plant uh, plants and they were going around and wrapping the ship. So Affy and them couldn't take out even if they wanted to. Lex runs in to find Affy. You know, it's all the aftermath. Read the book. We're not going to tell you the whole thing. You know, I mean, we're not the audio book. So <laughs> needless to say, they get away. The, um, oh. the, Night Hill and wait, how that's that was cool. Like when uh Wreath figured out how to like make them fight each other, and he's like, because at first they're like the the um the, the stones are keeping them in, all in place. Yeah. And then he's like, There's no way we're gonna get through with the Night Hill still there. Mm -hmm. Let's just destroy it. Then... Yeah, so the Night Hill are running around now and got them trapped. So they've already put them back up, the stones back into place. They're like, okay, we've killed off, we've either incinerated. Or we have trapped the drain gear. What are we going to do? Because the Nile have taken over the whole ship, and now we can't get out. We can't get back to where we need to, even though, like the we, we think we can get out. So he ends up going like, ah, let's just do it. They destroy. Now they destroy the which whatever they destroy the artifacts and the artifacts, which was like a lady, a grasshopper, bug type thing, and something else. But anyways, they destroy the artifacts and. The drain gear come back to life, and now they're fighting Nil, and Nil are fighting them. Everybody's going crazy. There is another run into Nan at one point, and Nan could have killed Wreath, but she's like, you saved me when you chopped off arm guy's thing, so I'm going to give you one shot. Get out of here before my the rest of my clan comes. Yeah. They get away, needless to say. I, I does anybody? I don't think we have to add in any more than that. You can read the deal. I don't think that's the last time we, we, we've seen Nan. I think she's no. I don't think so either. No, I I 100 think we're going to see her again. I actually yeah. think we're going to see her in a comic book series that's done by IDW. Either way, um, so they get out of there, they go back, and then they're like, okay, cool, we have all this now. Everybody's blowing each other up. Great stuff. They did. Did they blow up the stuff so you can't go back to the planet? They, he did something to that, didn't he? Uh, kind so, of. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, he yeah. just kind of made it hard to go back on the pods. He, he because the pods, up, he shot out. He yeah. shot out the pods, so you can't yeah. go use the pods anymore. Yep, that's what he did there. So he didn't actually disable it. He just got rid of the the, the ships. So if you try to push ship in there, you're probably going to block. That line, because yeah. once that line is no longer there or established, it's you have to be super it, slicer man to re reestablish that. It wasn't just that one. He got rid of all the pods so they could yeah. shoot anywhere. So they can't like just reprogram it. Um, and they take off. Uh, they get back, and at this point, oh, I like I, I know we don't talk about the whole entire book, but I really no, like the geode scene. Saving, oh, saving back we, yeah, yeah. Which one? When he was on course on parting at at, at uh oh, oh the when so uh basically uh oh yeah so yeah yeah here in the the Nile are fighting. They need more time to get all the vines off. So wreath is like I'll distract while you guys can, can can do that and basically like was gonna was gonna sacrifice himself uh he was gonna sacrifice himself 
uh, like one Jedi because you're you need uh, that, that that whole thing you said earlier in the with the mm. crossing the the, the bridge. The, for the, yeah, for the grid. Good. So he yeah. figures out about how to do the Kyber arc because it always takes one more. Yes. So it's so the that's cool. And you're like, oh man, he's gonna go out like, like like a BA, but then he does that, sucks people into outer space. He's gonna die, he's gonna and then as he gets off. to like it gets oh because you have to like he like breathes out too and i'm like oh that's really interesting because if you have lung air in your lungs and you get in space it up. so he like breathes out and then he's trying to hold his breath to hit it again and then as he is like getting sucked out because he couldn't hold his breath anymore geode's there and geode saves him yeah so he opens up the airlock everybody starts flying out of the airlock all of a sudden geode's there and he's like thanks buddy and he closes the door because he can pull on to geode um which then at that point, I think we all think Geode is is really, he really is an alien species and can do other things. We do find him parting later on on Coruscant, right? He also helps uh, one of our friends, Orla, pick out a ship. We do find that later. Here, speaking of him, here it is. So I can I see this? Is this Jake Patrick is the artist for uh, Geode here, just I'm to give that man some credit. The resemblance of Dwayne Johnson is just <laughs> there. I mean, it's just... Wow. So they do get back. So they get back to the planet. They So he solved the arc question, um, which is what, Jen? What's the arc answer to the arc question? They, you were right about, like, so you, he technically can cross by himself, but it's about, like, I kind of felt like it was kind of like the Three Musketeers, like, what, right? Yeah. Like, all for all, one for all. Basically, yeah. that's like the yeah. basic. Like the basic is, yeah. You can, you can. You have to sacrifice yourself for the greater good of all the others, right? To make it's, another. You one have to go and reach out to one of the Jedi part. people. It's like a. It's also the thing with the apprentice. It's also a, a gift with the apprentice and the like. It's the rule of two for yeah. the Jedi, like the apprentice and master type thing yeah. too. Like you should always be one with the Force, but then it creates one Force thing. We are not going to get into all that. Okay, I want a short explanation. That's why I went to you, and I got right. a longer one. Okay, so. Um, <laughs> They end up back on the planet and then everything starts happening. The The part that I thought was really cool towards the end was when they went with Reith and they asked him what he wanted to do. And obviously now he is going to get hooked up with um, Vitus, Master Vitus, but that is, he chose him, but he did, he's like, the reason why he was hesitant, he did kind of figure out like he had his coming of age thing. He's like, okay, well, I can't stay safe on this planet anyways. I have to do something. I might as well go out with him out into the, uh, space and at least i get to still have adventure but really i get to do the research i have a feeling that's not the last we're going to see of these two but he also didn't, he hmm? didn't kind of want to be his teacher at first like no. he's like, oh hey like i want you and he's like hmm. really he oh. didn't think so hmm. well he seems hesitant like like i'm not gonna i'm not like jora and it's like that's why i'm choosing you and he's like because he and he's like well the whole thing with the force and how he's trying to figure out more about the force and like He's like, I'm kind of like learning too. And he's like, maybe you'll teach me too. Like, it seems like it was oh, going okay. back and forth. And Is that how it sounded? Like when I read it, it sounded like he never had thought about it before. Like it just never came to his mind that that would be a path he would take. And so he's like, oh, wait, you want me? I'm not a, like, I'm a Jedi master, but I'm not the teaching master. Like yeah. that's, and then he was like, oh, but yeah, I mean, I'm down with it. Just, yeah, cool. We're, we're on the same page. Yeah. So that was cool. Uh, Jorla ends up picking out a ship, a real cool ship. And Geo. <laughs> He's there. Like, he's actually there helping pick it out. She jokes around with him about coming with her. She's definitely deciding to go take whatever her sabbatical is going to be. It, I did feel very bad for Des because he's now went from, like, super rock star to, like, I'm having issues. Like, I'm having big type problems, well, and I have to re retrain pretty much, right? Well, it, it kind of felt like where he was going was, like, it's probably not a good example, a better example. Like he's becoming like dev like devout, devout mm -hmm. devoted. Like mm -hmm. like it's not gonna be the adventure anymore. It's I'm gonna like go and meditate and like like a monk, monk that, that yeah, yeah, like a literal monk that goes and doesn't speak for twenty years. Like yeah. that's what it seemed like. So it's kinda it does kind of pull on the heartstrings a little bit. She did a very, very good job with that. It's very Cedric Diggory esque as <laughs> he dies. <laughs> Spoiler alert for Harry Potter. <laughs> But they do, I mean, they do leave it on a little bit of a cliffhanger where you see a bunch of these characters go out to kind of do what they do. But they leave it that something might still be going on and that we might see these characters again. I thought overall, like, listen, it was a good read. It was an easy read. Um, just because I don't like a character and how it's handled doesn't mean it was a bad job. 
Like I just, I unfortunately think if you, if you would have started off with this book and that was the bad guy that we got, I would have been like, Ooh, mm. luckily we got the night hill and I'm like, Ooh, okay. Well, I mean, it is what it is, you know, but everybody has a different of opinions. I heard a lot of theories on how maybe that was part of it too. I, I heard a lot of theories on how this, that, that they could have worked like with, like hive mind and stuff like that. Now it seems like they're just poisoning people and like, you know, a plant shop before. But if you disagree down down low, like give us a give us a comment. Everybody's got can have a different opinion. I don't know what your guys' opinion was, but let's get some real feedback on it. Overall, solo Wookie, just some of your favorite characters, some of your favorite moments, and, and kind of give it out of a five uh, light star rating. You know, um, lightsaber rating. Give us a couple. What you thought? Um. Oh boy, it's hard. It's hard. Um, overall rating, I I, I kind of want to give it a four. I think I think I'd be a real solid four, no doubt about it. And I after I read it again, once there is, I think we're looking at at least what one or two more books in this series, maybe trilogy mm -hmm. saga. I'm not sure how many are left. I think we got. We're gonna have at least. Well, there's another at big novel one. coming up, and another you, another youth knowledge coming up, and then they'll have a like, kitty one too. So, so I think after reading all of them, I'll go back and revisit it, and I think this book will mean and make a lot more sense and be a lot more pertinent than what I see now. I can see that already. The book sounded to me on the audio tape like it was very um, written a lot more in depth and had a lot more chapters. And then I think they may have got cut cut out. Like, hey, you can't say that yet. That's later on. That's We're going to come back to that. We're going to touch on this. So it seemed that chapters 1 through 11, I couldn't get into it. I was like, what is going on? Like, I, I get it, but the descriptions were real quick and brief and sounded choppy. Um, not a lot of finite detail in the descriptions of, of the people or places or so I was I was having a lot of trouble. And then and then I hit chapter 11. It was like, oh, OK, this is wow. This is all right. I see. This is good. You know, this is. And by the end, I was like, wow, OK. That was a really, really solid, enjoyable book. I I read a lot of tween novels or whatever, um, so that doesn't bother me. Yes, it is got that um, easy read predictability to it. Not a lot of super twist and turns novel intelligent overthinking, but sometimes I like that. It's a little quick and easy. So I I. I'm going to give it a four, but I, a lot of that's based on the fact that I know that down the road, this book is going to mean a lot more to me than it does now. And I, I don't, I appreciate that. And I don't want to ruin Judd's grading on it, but I will drop this point in there too. It does, it does have to be pretty difficult when you have so many like strong writers in yes. so many different directions in itself. And then to change the timeline of when stuff's coming out too is difficult. I, I'm not saying you should change your grade because of that. I'm just saying it is what it is. Jen, not that I'm worried about Jen because we know how Jen grades. So Jen, <laughs> how many lightsabers we got? Uh, so, okay. So if Lay the Jedi was like here, I feel like right now Into the Dark is like right, be right below it. Like I still like Lay the Jedi uh, a little bit more, um, but it was just cool to get another perspective of the great disaster and meeting these new characters. I was like, oh, it's kind of cool. Like, because they kind of like fleshed out like what, what, how like they were in the freaking thing. And then they're like, what's going on with the hyperspace? It was just, it was cool to see another perspective. Um, oh, man, did I grade a five for Light of the Sure, film? just whatever. Uh, yeah, if you grade like a five. Four and a half, just slightly like, but I really liked uh, the character of Wreath as being someone that like likes to read um, and uh, just, Cause come on, the Jedi library, like, come on, like, I, I, if it was real, I feel like that would be like the mecca for like everyone, right? To like all the those like knowledge and yeah, yeah. So I really liked that, and uh, I like Affy. I think we're gonna see Affy again too. Um, and I like Geode. <laughs> I feel like I, I, yeah, I look forward to other stories, if not like 
comic book or a TV show. Like, I just want to see, because Marco, you posted that, that, because I didn't know, I didn't see that before on Instagram. You posted that and I like laughed out loud when I saw it and then I had to explain to somebody why I laughed out loud and yeah. Um, well, and at first. For, yeah, feel free to for follow me, our IG account. There's a link below. Sometimes I put in crafty stuff there. For, for time, me, not- it, when I first heard and was reading or listening to Geode, I was like, this is really, wow. Like this, I don't like this at all. <laughs> and then by, like I said, by chapter 12 or 13, you're like, all right, at least we have an original new character. And by the end of it, you're like, that geode's cool. Like, I, I like that character. That's a really, I can get behind that. Yeah. So, this and is makes, so. Are you guys like, it makes me still excited to read the next. I was like, okay, next book. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, we have to wait like a month or two. So, right? I was worried. Yeah, we do. We actually have to wait a couple months. So, I was really worried because I, like I said, I thoroughly enjoy this uh, author and I was hoping that everybody else would too. I also know that <clears throat> doing stuff young adult sometimes isn't the best. I really, the first book, I enjoyed a lot of the storyline. I thought the storyline was very well done. I thought some of the Jedi were done exceptionally well. I I thought the villains were done extremely well. I thought the mystery was done extremely well. Um, I'm giving this one right up there with the four, four and a half, two. Uh, It's just like the other ones. There's a couple Jedi I had problems with. Maybe they're just not for me in the first book. Unfortunately for this, the big bad here just wasn't for me. Just wasn't for me, but that's okay. The rest of it was great. Like the humor, I laughed at it. Like, yeah, it's good sometimes. Every read doesn't have to be, you know, uh, autonomy class. Like you can, it doesn't have to be like, oh, I really got to figure out who this mystery is. It's okay to have easy reads every once in a while. And it's fun to have them. And that's what she did. She did a good job where it was like, there was a lot of throwbacks there was a lot of like little cuts here, little cuts there, and they were subtle. She didn't overdo them, and she laughed at herself at times when she wrote it. Um, overall, I mean, I, there's nothing to complain about. It was a good book. If they keep doing this, you know, we got we got Scott stuff coming up too. Mm-hmm. And like when I think about characters that can write the Drain Gear, like Kevin Scott is somebody I'm like no doubt. Like that's a character he loves the horror stuff. That's a character he does. When you want characters where you really want to build like the essence of the character, the character development, where you can show what that character or character that's already developed or something that you already have a feeling for and get that deep inner spirit feeling of it, that's Gray's home run. Like that's what she does. And you saw that. I mean, you saw that with what she did with the Jedi. You know what I mean? You saw that with what she did with the Affy character and how she gave that humanization to these characters. Um with that being said, and with Geo too, yeah, and with Geo, like that little humor is great. Like she, yeah. that's where she hits home runs. They gave her a horror character, a horror character as in the horror genre, and I think it's tough if you're not in that genre to do. Mm-hmm. I also think it's tough when you're handcuffed because there's so many projects going on. I mean, sure. currently some of the comic books are out there, and I'm not quite sure. Like you know, I there's just realms that I take. Maybe not. For some reason, I like the kitty books in the in the in the comics and the adult books in the, in the novels. So there we go. There we have it. We'll get you the next one too. Um, we're also going to have a couple different other reviews. Please uh, like, subscribe, do all the stuff you need to do. And uh, anybody else want to add anything? All right. Force be with you always. <laughs>